Hey fungies, it's Steffi and I just woke up today looking at the latest looks from the Met Gala. I'm just absolutely buzzing with excitement and inspiration from all the beautiful pieces. And so now I really want to make one of my own based on the theme Garden of Time and we'll see what comes out of it. So I'm going to bring you guys along for the ride and let's see what we can make. Okay, so this is the mood board we have come up with so far. We've got a lot of Chinese elements here especially with all these flowy shapes and I thought it would be really cool if we can incorporate something a little bit more modern and also I looked at these futuristic geometric and sharp shapes sharp structures which I thought would also be super cool as well so I feel like it will be a mixture of all of these right now and we will start making it in 3D. And now we jump into Clove 3D to build the garments and this is where I start building the idea from scratch. And as I was building a dress I was thinking so far so good like this is nothing out of the ordinary but then I wanted to try making drapes and like having these flowy long fabrics come out of it and actually I haven't really done much of that before and so what I found out is that you have to be super careful for when you're simulating drapey long fabrics and especially if they're going to be laid on top of each other because they like to intersect which is a pain in the backside especially this cape this cape gave me so many problems i kid you not and i think i should have actually frozen my layers underneath a lot earlier because i got to a point where I was just trying to work with all the layers, which was stupid of me. But now that I look back, I'm like, should have frozen the layers first so that it wouldn't have affected the other sections so much. But we live and we learn. And I had a lot of fun making this shoulder piece as well. I just really thought it really added to the floral aspect. I just thought it added a lot to the floral theme for the Garden of Time. And actually this shoulder piece would typically be used to decorate the shoulders and to be worn on top of a hand food. But I wanted to add a modern touch and so this is what I went for. And of course we couldn't keep it just in a tea pose, we had to change its pose to something a bit more fancy. It's a Met Gala, I wanted some, you know, like a power pose that's a little bit stylish as well. And so once I simulated that in Clove 3D, I then went to change the draping of the cape. And this is where I ran into a lot of issues with the fabric. It kept intersecting with itself, which is a pain. And if you guys work in Clove 3D or Marvelous Designer, you will know this pain so well. And so I spent a long time just like untangling it and making sure that it drapes nicely and it worked out in the end. Once that was done, I jumped into Substance Painter, which is my absolute favorite. I love texturing in 3D. It is my absolute happy place in 3D and it's really where I can start customizing my own style into these pieces. Because let's be real, a lot of people will be able to make digital fashion garments and not to mention AI, which will be taking over that section probably in a few years time. And so what makes my work stand out the most is actually my style and my story. And that's something I take a huge pride in sharing with my art pieces. It's also probably why I spend the longest time in texturing because I love to add all of these final little details. And sometimes I even draw in my own details too. But for this piece, I really couldn't make up my mind on the fabric. And it actually took me a few iterations of color choices before I decided on this right here. I chose this color green here because I felt like with the garden theme it was just an obvious nod to something floral and green and naturous so I decided to go with that and actually also add a bit of floral design or pattern designs to the shoulder piece and to the sleeves to help further push that garden and floral theme into the outfits. And whenever I'm drawing these custom pieces it takes me quite a long time and a longer time than people think because I actually tend to put on a movie or listen to music or a podcast whilst I'm doing this because this is like me as a kid sketching on a piece of paper but instead I'm sketching it in 3D and I just find it so satisfying to do. I also chose this translucent mesh to use for the cape and the drapes around the dress because I thought instead of it taking the show as in like stealing the spotlight from the main dress which is what I want to show off I wanted something that really complements it. So yeah, overall really happy with this piece. I was kind of scared that it would look too much like a superhero costume or like just costume design. I didn't want it to look something like that. And so finding a balance between something being too costumey 
And something where it feels avant-garde is a fine line, in my opinion. And as I was creating this piece, it really reminded me of this character from Kim Possible, Shigo. Like the whole colour theme of this green and black situation, it just reminded me of her. But I also really like how sleek and chic she is as well. If you guys have watched Kim Possible, please comment below so I don't feel like I'm showing my age here. I'm at this point where I'm texturing and I'm actually really liking what I've created now. Before, it took me a few iterations before, I decided I like what I was designing but now that we've got more of this kind of floral pattern happening and also there's like these graphic lines that kind of thread between them so I feel like the, the graphic lines can thread between the time element and the floral of course to do with gardening so I feel like we're matching the theme here. Once I was happy with the texture, I brought everything into Cinema 4D and this is my absolute love. I actually started in Cinema 4D as my first 3D program when I was working as a motion designer before, but it's a place where I would start to build my 3D scenes, light the objects and even render in Redshift at the end. And actually this scene is pretty simple because it just consists of two planes, one on the bottom and one in the background and I really wanted to use a colour that would make the green pop and as you can see we opted for this sort of purpley blue background and having the lighting be the main star of the show because actually without the lighting this piece would look very flat and simple but I think by adding all of these assets well these mountains in the background it really helped to show off the beautiful lighting that was being reflected in the ground as well so I think having all of these elements together helps to make it look a lot more polished than if I were to just add a simple HDRI or dome light and have plain flooring that don't show off the reflections. But I think at this point it's each to their own. I really like having the mountains in the background because I wanted something that seems nature-esque. I wanted the 3D scene to feel like you were not only in a surreal set, a lot of my sets or a lot of my 3D scenes are just mostly surreal, they're not meant to be super realistic but they are always stylized in a way that it makes you feel like you're, you stepped into a new world. I also added some area lights just behind the garment. I don't know if you guys can see that, but what's giving the pop of green around the garment are probably two area lights that are going from the left side to the right side, highlighting the garment and making it stand out a little bit more. And I suppose with Cinema 4D, this is how I like to work with three different panels on a screen. The left one is for redshift, the middle one is just for the camera in general, and the right one is for the perspective view where I can navigate pretty easily if I wanted to change the camera, the lighting, or just look at things at a different angle. And once that was done, I was really missing some sort of animation with the avatar. If you know anything about my work, I usually have the avatar walking in a walking cycle. However, with this piece, I just felt like I just wanted to get it out as soon as possible. But it was lacking the animation part, so I actually went back to Clove 3D and added some wind simulation. Granted, this is my first time using wind simulation in Clove 3D, I was actually pretty proud of myself because it didn't look half bad. But I tell you what, it took me a few tries to get the right type of wind before I was satisfied because there's so many different types of wind and different feelings you can get with wind that I myself need to experiment more with but I wanted to get a sort of a gentle breeze that will push the garment softly. And finally, I decided to jump into ZBrush to create a mask. I did this recently on my latest collection for Paris, but I haven't edited that video yet. It's gonna come out soon for NFT Paris, my latest dragon collection. You guys will see that soon where I've used ZBrush a lot for all the masks, but it's a technique I've used recently and I've been absolutely loving. And so I brought that into Substance Painter, jazzed it all up, added a bit of color, and of course related it back to my project scene that I had in Cinema 4D, and in purple and green hues, and I felt like it really brought this futuristic vibe to the whole look. And after all of that, I finally rendered it with Redshift and it looked like this. Let me know in the comments if you think I managed to get the theme right. Overall, I was pretty happy with it. It was a one day project, guys, a one day project. And I can tell you, especially if you guys work in digital fashion, creating something in a day, especially with animation and rendering and all of that jazz, it's pretty hard. 
because there's just so much detail you can add and finesse and like the perfectionist in me is like no Steffi there's more you can improve upon but I'm actually pretty happy with where it is right now and that is how we make a piece inspired by the Met Gala and for those of you who don't know I have an awesome Patreon communities yes I have other fungies who are interested in 3D fashion and tech and not only that we also have 3D or digital fashion tutorials We've got industry advice and we've got career advice all about digital fashion. So if that sounds interesting to you and you want to find out more or you want to take your digital fashion skills to the next level, then come and join Patreon. I also do weekly Twitch streams where I show my digital fashion process. So if you guys want to join me and the Fun G's on Twitch, I stream every week on Wednesdays. Thank you so much for watching. Let's keep in touch on Discord and I'll see you in the next video.